morning, House of Refuge. Good morning. Amen. It's a perfect morning to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. As we look and see how many, how much, so much stuff is happening around us, but God's still sticking by his word. Amen. Amen. I'm be coming to you with a scripture from Revelation 5 and 12. And a lot of boys, they, they were saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power, wealth, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and praise. Amen. Bow your heads for a moment of prayer. Dear gracious God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day. Heavenly Father, we know this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for what you're doing in this season. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for what you're doing in this house. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for just grounding us, Lord Jesus, in the, in the last and evil day. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for the strength that you have pulled into this church. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for everything that you are doing. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for waking us up with a finger touch of love on this morning. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for hiding us in the shadows of your wings. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything you're doing. Heavenly Father, continue to strengthen us, shape us, and mold us in what you will have us to be. Heavenly Father, we know all things work together for the good of those and them that love you. Heavenly Father, we just want to ask you on this day, Lord Jesus, just pour into the pastor, Lord Jesus, as he pour into us. Heavenly Father, give him a word from on high. Heavenly Father, we want to we want to ask you to just move in a great and in a mighty way. Heavenly Father, just continue, Lord Jesus, to strengthen this church. In Jesus' name, Lord, we do pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. While we're standing, it's praise and worship time. Come on, bless the Lord with the freedom of your lips, with the waving of your hands. Come on, let's ship our God in this place. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. And I'm going to bless him. I'm going to bless him because he's been so good to us from the time we woke up to the time we lay our head. What a mighty God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Oh God, he's worthy to be praised. Our God is an awesome God. He's an omnipotent God. And we're going to give him our best praise. So what is the highest praise? That we can say, come on, say, what is the highest praise that we can say? Hallelujah is the highest praise. We're chasing after God everywhere we go, wherever He is, that's where we want to be. How many chasing after Him? Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together.
gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. Gotta be Give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, you can do better than that. Give him a praise. That is worthy of the God that we serve. Amen. Amen. We thank him. I wish I could sing. I wish I could. I wish I could sing. <laughs> For your glory, I would do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. Help me, somebody. For your glory. I would do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. I want to be where you are, got to be where you are, want to be where Gotta be where you are. Wanna be where you are. Wanna be where you are. Gotta be where you are. Gotta be where you are. Wanna be where you are. Gotta be where. Come on, give him a praise. I just want to be where he is. For in the presence of the Lord, there is the fullness of joy and peace forevermore. I need about 15 of y'all to just stand on your feet. Wherever you are, just stand on your feet. We're going to go to the word in just a moment. I dare you, I dare you to just look toward heaven and say, I want to be where you are. Come on, one more time. Say, I got to be where you are. Got to be where you are. Now give him a praise, somebody. <laughs> you do know that if you're where he is, that means he has not left you, nor has he forsaken you. Somebody in here can testify you are where he is. Amen. He's right by your side. While we're standing, we thank God for this music ministry. Come on, give God a hand. Praise for them. Come on, let's thank God for the House of Refuge Church. We bless God for each and every one of you. Amen. And what God is doing in your life. I just need somebody to wave at me if God is blessing you. Come on, if he's blessing you, amen. We thank God, we thank God for all that he has done. Amen. It's good to us every day, amen, in every way. Uh, the Lord is just so good and we thank him for that, amen. 
Hey, Amen. He's just so good to us. Um, I, I need a voice today. Amen. Uh, I just, I just thank God for all that He's doing. Amen. Uh, it, it's amazing to me. Every time I turn around, He's blessing me. Amen. Come on, somebody else. Somebody else in here is receiving the goodness, the blessings of the Lord, His mercy and His grace. Amen. And so we just thank Him so much for all that he's doing uh today i want to share with you i want to give you uh just uh this uh message that the lord has given me and it is a swift reminder to all of us to thank god for all that he has done i'll say it again it is a swift reminder to thank god for all that he has done many times as we go through life hurrying and scurrying trying to make our way to the place, the destination that we desire to be in. Uh, along the way, we forget to thank God for what he has done. We forget to thank God for how good he's been to us, the many ways that he's made for us, all of the prayers that he's answered for us. Uh, sometimes we tend to for forget. Uh, but today we're going to be reminded of how good God is. Luke chapter 17 and verse 11, amen. Catch me if you can. Every time I turn around, the Lord is blessing me. Every time I turn around, the Lord is blessing me. Every time I turn around, the Lord is blessing me. Hallelujah. Praise. Praise God. Come on, help me say it. Every time I turn around, the Lord is blessing me. <laughs> Every time I turn around, the Lord is blessing me. Every time I turn around, the Lord is blessing me. Hallelujah. Praise. Praise God. Come on, help me. Let's demonstrate it. Every time I turn around, The Lord is blessing me. Come on, by faith turn. Every time I turn around, the Lord is blessing me. Every time I turn around, me hey. hallelujah 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 pray God, we're thankful for you. Thankful for what you've done and what you're doing. Thankful for how you blessed us, kept us, brought, it to, brought us to this appointed time. Speak to us, oh God. 
every fiber of our being. Woo. Speak in such a way that the future looks bright. Speak in such a way burdens, problems, and dilemmas fall from our shoulders. Speak, oh God, that we might be better than when we came. In your blessed name we do pray. And every heart said amen. Amen. Luke chapter 17 and verse 11. If you don't have it, we're blessed to have it on the screen for you. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the, the midst of Samaria and the Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice glorified God and fell on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Look at a neighbor and say, neighbor, out of all you do, don't forget to tell God thank you. It is mine, in a cognitive sense, not to be long at all, because I want to share with you just some fundamental truths out of this passage that we've just read. It is important to note and to understand that Luke is the writer. Luke is a physician by trade, but he has been called to be a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as he is a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, Luke begins to pen, and he begins to pen out of his occupation. Because he is a doctor, he is very detailed in what he pens. Unlike Mark, his counterpart, who writes very swiftly, quickly, and to the point. Mark is, uh, rather Luke is, uh, a writer whose book is filled uh, with details. And here, as he opens chapter 17, he shares the words of Jesus by the pen in which he writes. Jesus is giving instructions to his disciples. He's letting them know about what is to come and what will come as they serve the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's interesting because he opens up in Luke chapter 17 by telling them that offenses will come. He simply says offenses, but as you look at it and break it down, he actually says that there will be hardship in the life of the believer. He simply says to them that there are going to be people who will lift you up and praise you when you do good, and there will be people who will talk about you when things go bad. He simply says to them that there will be times when you have done everything right, but somebody will find something wrong with what you've done. 
He says that there will be times where you can pray in the morning and get up, start out on your day, and somebody will try you before the day is over with. He simply says that there will be opposition. There will be things uh, that you think that you are over, uh, but they will come and they will challenge you uh, to remain steadfast uh, and true to the Lord Jesus Christ. He says that offenses uh, will come, uh, but he shares with them no matter who by whom those offenses come, uh, he says you must learn how to forgive. He says, you must learn, God, I must be talking to somebody because I felt something there. He says that you must be willing and able and capable to forgive those who bring offense against you. And simply put, he says that when people do you wrong, hurt you, and do you bad, you've got to be able to forgive them and keep Keep on being who God created you to be. I know, I know. He he simply says you got to learn how to take a licking and keep on ticking. He simply says uh, that when somebody has done you wrong, uh, you must learn how to say, Father, forgive them, uh, for they know not what they do. He says that you must learn how uh, to forgive. He, he really states that it is important for us uh, to learn how to forgive uh, because he says to them, uh, if he does it seven times a day, he says you must forgive him uh, each and every time uh, that they commit the offense against you. And then he moves from there and he shares with them uh, because they ask a question, Lord, give us more faith. Uh, and he says a little faith or a lot of faith doesn't make a difference uh, just as long as you have faith. Uh, he says that if you have the faith uh, of the size of a mustard seed, one writer says a poppy seed, uh, he says then uh, you can speak to this tree, be removed uh, and cast into the sea and it shall be done. Now, let me share with you, I don't know how big or small your problem may be, but if you got a little bit of faith, all you've got to do is open your mouth and speak to it. And the Bible says, we speak those things that be not as though there were. Is there anybody in here that's got a problem in your life that you've been dancing around? I declared unto you today that if you speak to your problem, your problem has to obey uh, because of the faith uh, that you possess. Do I have anybody in here that's got faith? Do I have anybody in here? I'm talking about real faith. I ain't talking about believe you uh, uh, today, but forget tomorrow that you're God and you're able to make. I'm talking about real faith. I'm talking about faith that looks at problems uh, and circumstances and say, though you slay me, yet will I trust in you. I'm talking about real Real faith, faith that says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm talking about real faith. Real faith says uh, that no matter what comes or goes, if God be for me, he's more than the world against me. Real faith uh, that says uh, that no matter what happens in my life, uh, that if I have God on my side, uh, everything will be all right. Do I have anybody in here? that's got real faith uh, that the doctor's report is good uh, but you know God's a healer that your bank account's empty but you know he'll supply your needs uh, that people walk off and forsake you but you know he'll be right there anybody got real faith real faith says that I'm going to make it because I've got God on my side he moves on and as he talks to them uh, about real faith, he finally falls into our text today and he shares this with us uh, and he begins to write in detail. He says uh, that he is going through Samaria and Galilee. 
And as he goes through Samaria and Galilee, he says he entered into a certain village and there met him ten lepers. Now just a little bit about lepers, they could not interact with other people because they had this disease that turned their skins a pale white and they could not interact with any other people because leprosy was very contagious. And if you touch somebody and you had leprosy, you could uh, transmit that disease. And so they were uh, isolated outside of the city in what they would call leper colonies. And as uh, Jesus passed by, they saw him uh, and uh, they cried out to him from afar. And as they cried out to him from afar, they got his attention. Mm. As they cried out to him from afar, they got his attention. Come here, let me see if I can help the person who feels like uh, they hadn't done all that they needed to do for God, that they're not in the place uh, that they need to be with God, that they have somehow, some way dropped the ball that uh, last year, year before last, five years ago, you were closer than you are right now. Let me tell you something. No matter how far you are from God, if you lift up your voice and call unto him, uh, he will come see you about you. Uh, is there anybody in here who knows uh, that God will come see about you? Is there anybody in here who can testify that he came and saw about me? I, I, wait, don't y'all fool me now. Everybody uh, can't sit quietly at the same time uh, because there are some of us in here who had gotten far away from God. We were in a mess. We were miserable, uh, but we cried out to God uh, and God came and saw about us. Uh, I know I'm not in here by myself, uh, but there's somebody else in here who can wave your hand uh, and say, I know what you're talking about, preacher. He came and got me out of the muck and mire. He came and got me out of my mess. Uh, he came and got me when I thought uh, it was all over, said and done with. Uh, somebody in here ought to be willing to tell God, thank you for coming and getting me when I couldn't even help my Myself. Lord have mercy not only did he come and get me when I prayed but he went and got my kids when I prayed he went and got my family members when I pray. Lord have mercy. I wish I had somebody in here. They were off doing their own thing, but I said, Lord, cover them. Lord have mercy. Won't he go see about them? Won't he wrap his arms of protection around them? Won't he give them the ability to call you and just say, I just wanted to say hi. Somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. God has a way, no matter how far you are, from him uh, to for being right there he says this to us he says well, they were a great way off they lifted up their voices and said Jesus master have mercy on us Lord I love it sometimes we don't hmm, get what we want because we don't know how to call him <laughs> Grandma said it like this, Deacon Wilson. She said, if you call him and call him right, he will answer prayer. Sometimes we have to know that we just can't call him because it's something that we do in the course of our day. We can't just call him because it's on our schedule to pray from 6 to 6.15. But we got to call him because we love him. We got to call him because we need him. We got to call him because of all that he's done for us. I, I, I may be missing somebody, but I'm getting somebody in here that it's just not to, I'm praying before I eat because that's what we're supposed to do. But God, I'm seriously thankful for this food that's in front of me 
because there are people hungry. There are people on the street. There are people who can't find anything to eat. But God, thank you for every morsel that's sitting in front of God. I wish I had y'all. Somebody in here needs to recognize uh, that my prayers have to be sincere prayers. And he says, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And I want to share with you, they cried. They said, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, let me, let me, let me push just a little bit. He said, when, I, when he saw them, he, when he saw them, when he laid eyes on them, he didn't have to ask them, were they leprous men? Because when he looks at us, he knows <laughs> just what we need. Is there anybody in here who didn't know what to pray, but you just said, Lord, have mercy? And I thank God that when we cry out and say, Lord, have mercy, when he looks at us, he knows exactly what we, we need. When he looks at them, the Bible says, he says, go show yourselves unto the priests. Antiquity teaches that once a leper was healed, he had to go to the priest, and the priests would now say or commend the fact that he was clean. And so he says, go show yourselves to the priest. Now, I want you to get this because I'm about a third, about a three-fourths of the way finished. Now, he says this. He says, go show yourselves to the priest. That's in verse number 14. And the latter part says that it came to pass that as they went. And, and it came to pass. That not when he spoke it, but as they went. Mm. I'm trying to do it justice, Lord. N not when they cried out and said, Lord, Master, have mercy on us. He looked on them and said, go show yourselves to the priest. They had to leave from that leper colony looking the same way they did before he said, go show yourselves to the priest. Can I tell you, sometimes uh, when God works a miracle in your life, things don't change right away. But you got to have the faith, the tenacity, and the audacity to keep on pushing on knowing that God's going to fix it even though the circumstances surrounding you have not. I'm preaching uh, all by myself and to myself. I want to tell you that even though it looks the same, we walk by faith uh, and not by sight. He says that as they went, as they took off going to the priest. They looked the same. But if you let me use my spiritual imagination that step by step, things begin to change with them. Can, can I use my spiritual imagination? I, I can believe uh, that if joints uh, were hurting as they went, uh, huh, things start feeling a little better. If our sight was dim uh, and harsh, uh, I can believe that as they went, they begin to see a little clearer. I, I can believe uh, that they looked over at one another and said, you know what? Uh, looks like your color is coming back. Lord have mercy I need somebody to walk with me uh, that won't be critical of me uh, but they'll say to me listen uh, things 
uh, are going to get better. Things uh, are getting better. Things are progressing. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I thank God uh, that as I push toward the prize uh, of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus, that things are looking better every day. And I thank God uh, that he brought me through yesterday to today. And I'm going to praise him today for what tomorrow is going to bring uh, day by day. As they went, somebody in here, you're waiting on the finish and the final product. But God wants to see if you'll praise him through the process. Lord have mercy. God wants to know if you'll praise him through the process. I know, I know, it seems like you have two good days, two bad days, but God wants to know, can you praise him for the two good days? Oh God, Lord have mercy. Somebody in here needs to understand that it is a process. And though it seems like the process is a great way off, every day you get closer to where God desires for you to be. And I want to tell somebody in here, don't you give up and don't you quit. I want to tell you what Paul said. Paul says, we see through a glass darkly tinted that we see in part, we know in part. Uh, but when the Lord comes we'll know all things uh, and so what he really says is uh, is that I really can't see tomorrow but I gotta trust God uh, for tomorrow anybody in here uh, saying Lord I believe uh, I'll run on and see what the end's gonna be uh, because if God is on my side uh, no weapon formed against me uh, shall be able to prosper Help me preach real quick. Help me preach real quick. Look at somebody and say it doesn't matter what it looks like. Come on, look at somebody else and say it doesn't matter what it looks like. I'm going to give God the praise anyway. It doesn't look like I'm going to get the job, but I'm going to still thank him for it. It doesn't look like the house is coming, but I thank God for it anyway. It doesn't look like I'm going to have peace, but I'm thanking God in the midst of my misery that peace is all the way. I'm right there. He says to them, go show yourselves to the priest. The Bible says, as they went, they were cleansed. They, they were cleansed as they went. And one of them. Hmm. Somebody say one of them. One out of ten. One of them. When he saw that he was cleansed, turned around, ran back, fell at his feet, and began to worship him. I think I'll try it one more time. One of them turned back, fell on his face, and begin to give him thanks. Huh. He's thanking God. He's thanking uh, him for his miracle at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus huh, says something that shocked me. While this man, this Samaritan is worshiping Jesus, Verse number 17 says, and Jesus answered saying, were there not ten? Wow, the one has turned back to worship, kneeling at his feet. Jesus says to him, were there not ten? Where, where the rest of them? And I, I want to ask a question. Are you in the 10% or the 90%? I, I want to know if the Lord's looking for you. 
I, I want to know if he's saying, where is uh, Sister Sam? Because uh, I blessed her just like I did you. And I'm grateful that you're worshiping, but where is she? I, I want to know. I want to know what percentage are you in because he's saying when you come into my house do you have to be pumped and primed to praise me or do you recognize the blessing that I've given you and do you come to worship on your own? And I don't know about you, but I'm not talking about just worshiping uh, in the house of God only, but you ought to have a place at your house. You ought to have a place on your job uh, where you go uh, and you just give God praise uh, for all that he's done in your life. Uh, I want to share with you that you ought to have uh, a sanctuary uh, that you can go to God and give God praise uh, for all that he's done. Don't uh, God, you don't have to call my name. Uh, you don't have to look for me uh, because I'm going to lift my hands uh, in the sanctuary and bless you. You don't have to look for me because when you bless me, I'm going to make sure that I say thank you. And how many of us are taking the blessings of God for granted? I ain't going to get too many amens. Uh, gentlemen, I may have to tune. I don't because they're going to follow. It's going to be bad here in a minute. How, how many of us has God blessed us so richly? Living better than we've ever lived before. Driving better than we ever drove before. Have money in our pockets. Uh, food in the freezer. Kids are doing well. And yet we will not open uh, our mouths uh, and tell God thank you. Able to do what other people cannot do. Able to do what other people wish they could do. Uh, and yet will not open your mouth. As if you deserve it. As if it is something that should be your now, baby. God has blessed you to be where you are doing what you do and be able to do it how you do it. And he deserves all of your praise. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. Now, let me share something with you. It's a rough part. If you don't learn how to give God thanks, Job said it like this. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. If you want to lose what you got, mess around and forget that you've got to tell God thank you. Now, 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 I got to put a pen right here because some folk think that just because you told him thank you once, that that's enough. But look at your neighbor and say, that ain't even close, baby. J just because you say, oh, Lord, I thank you, then you're going over there. No, 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 no. His mercies are new every morning. His, his mercies are new every morning. And every time you open your eyes, you ought to thank God for all that he's done. Bible says to us, if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise him enough for all that he's done. And I just want to share with somebody in here today that uh, you've got a lot to be thankful for. I want to share with somebody in here that you've got a right to praise him. I want to share with somebody in here that you don't want any rocks crying out in your place. I, I want to tell you, no, you don't, you don't want rocks crying out in your place. <laughs> Because Jesus told them, he said, uh, if these uh, don't praise me, he said, then uh, the rocks will uh, cry out in their place. 
and I don't know about you, but I believe uh, that when the praises go up, that our uh, blessings will uh, come down. And I don't know about you, but uh, I'm standing in the need uh, of a blessing. I'm standing, uh, yes, in the need uh, of uh, a miracle. Uh, and I just want somebody in here uh, to be blessed uh, by the Lord uh, God uh, Almighty. <laughs> and if I had, uh, yes, uh, a little more time, uh, I'd tell you uh, that God will uh, come uh, and uh, see about you. Uh, for uh, I found out uh, if you call him uh, and uh, you call him a right, uh, God will uh, show up uh, and uh, show out. Uh, can I get a witness here? Yeah. Somebody here today uh, can testify uh, that I've called on the Lord uh, and the Lord uh, came uh, and saw about me. Uh, well, uh, wave uh, your hand uh, if God has uh, came in uh, the nick of time. Uh, can I get a witness here? Yeah. And I'm so glad yes uh, that Luke uh, didn't stop yes uh, with only uh, this man uh, praising God uh, but he said unto him uh, yeah be thou whole and be thou healed I'm closing here but I heard yeah the Bible saying uh, that I just don't want uh, to be a recipient uh, of the blessings of God uh, without knowing God. Uh, he says, uh, because you came uh, and you worship me, uh, I'm not only going to heal, uh, heal your body, uh, but I'm going to heal your soul. Uh, I want to close now uh, when I tell you uh, that what it means to be hold is uh, to be safely secure uh, from all hurt and harm uh, and I thank God yes uh, that I'm not worried uh, about what tomorrow may bring uh, because my God uh, is already there uh, I'm out of here y'all uh, is there anybody here uh, know that God will uh, take care of you uh, is there anybody here uh, know that God will uh, open doors for you? Uh, anybody here uh, know that God will uh, touch your body uh, when you're sick? Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, well, uh, if God has uh, moved in your life, uh, if God has uh, made a way in your life, uh, if God has uh, open doors for you. Uh, I need somebody, <laughs> Lord have mercy, to give my God uh, a great praise. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, I need somebody uh, to lift up holy hands. Uh, I need somebody uh, to open their mouths uh, and give our God uh, a wonderful praise. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, I need somebody uh, to clap your hands uh, in the sanctuary uh, and bless the Lord. Uh, for the Lord is good. Uh, his mercy uh, endure to all generations. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, well, uh, I wish I could tell you uh, to shake a neighbor's hand, uh, but I can't do that. Uh, but look at a neighbor. Uh, look at in the eye, look them in the eye, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'll bless the Lord at all times, ain't God all right, yeah, yeah.
a blessing at all times. At all times. He's been too good to me. And if I want to keep on receiving his blessing, then I got to keep on praising him. I got to keep on praising him. Keep on giving him glory. Keep on giving him honor. Keep on giving him praise. He says, if you could be faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over many. Praise him for the small stuff. And he'll allow the big stuff to come into your life. That's the kind of God that we serve. That's the kind of God that we serve. Everybody standing on your feet, praise team, come help me. Like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raging and their fury fall on me, I wonder what have I done makes this race so hard for me to run. Then I say to my soul, Take courage, oh, the Lord will make a way somehow. Like a ship that's tossed and driven, battered by an angry sea. When the storms of life are raised, some old school church. The Lord will make a way somehow. Mm -hmm. When beneath the cross, the cross I bow, he will, he will make a way your sorrow. Let him have. Shown upon my brow, there's a sweet relief. 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 
church all open. You can come by letter candidate for baptism, Christian experience. If you want to be saved, we want you to be saved. Those of you on social media, if you want to be saved, it's very simple. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, believe in your heart that he has rose Jesus Christ, that he's risen from the dead, that you shall be saved. We're going to pray a prayer with you in a minute. There may be somebody you need special prayer. I want you to come. There's a sweet relief. There's a sweet relief. There's a sweet relief. If you're there or you're here and you want to be saved, repeat this prayer after me. God, I come in the name of Jesus asking that you would forgive me of my sins. I believe that you hung, bled, died, rose, reigned, and have a regency in my life. That you sit on the right hand of the Father. I pray now that the work you did on the cross I believe now of the death, burial, and resurrection. Accept me into your royal family. Accept me into your royal family. You said if I confess with my mouth, believe in my heart, that I shall be saved. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God a hand praise. Somebody got saved. Somebody got saved. There's a sweet relief. 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 So sweet. There's a sweet relief. So sweet. There's a sweet relief. So sweet. There's a sweet relief. In no Amen. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand praise today. We thank him for his goodness, his mercy, his love. We thank him for his word. Amen. We bless God for this service and all that we have experienced in it. We do know, we do know we can testify and we can share to God. Lord, if you bless me and when you bless me, I will always give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen. Amen. One of the ways we tell God thank you is with our giving. Amen. Amen. I need somebody to be excited about giving. Amen. I need somebody to be excited because uh, you remember a time when you couldn't give like you can give now. Come on, somebody give God a praise for that. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for being in the position to give. And so one of the ways that we honor him is that we give of our tithe and we give of our offering. And so we thank God for the ability to do so. Uh, it is that time now. So if you need an envelope, uh, we're just going to ask that you would raise your hand. Our professional ministry technicians will give to you. Those of you on social media, there are several ways to give. You can mail your gift, 1707 West 6th Street, Texarkana, Texas. Also, you can give on Givelify. <laughs> Download the Givelify app on your Android or uh, your um, iPhone and uh, select House of Refuge Church through the Givelify app, and you can give in that manner as well. Also, Cash App. House of Refuge, TXK, 
House of Refuge, T X K, uh, on Cash App, and uh, you can you can give in that manner. Let me share with you: there are gifts coming in from all over our country. Amen. Amen. And amen. There are gifts coming in from all over our country. I want you to understand something. I want you to understand something. That there are people who are viewing our broadcast. There are people who are viewing our broadcast all over this country. And you never know what individual you can help. You never know who may see you and be blessed by what you do. Blessed by this service. Blessed by your presence. Blessed by your prayers in the service. So we never know who may be blessed. Blessed by your singing, by your playing, by your preaching, by your teaching. We, do, we never know who may see us. We never know who may need us. Amen? Amen. And so we want to thank God for that. I remember, um, I remember um, uh, Bishop Jakes saying that there was, uh, he was on um, at a, um, a conference and uh, he was he was preaching in a conference and at the conference uh, the owner of TVN saw him on a replay of that particular conference on some some channel and he he saw him and he called him and he told him that he wanted him to come and be on TVN and from there uh, we know the, the the legacy of TD Jakes amen uh, but you never know who may see you. You never know who may see you. You never know who may need you. Amen? Amen. So do all that you do in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and allow him to bless you as he see fits. Amen? Amen. Uh, now that we have our envelopes, now that we have given, we thank God for it. Amen. We're going to bless him. We're going to receive this offering and we'll go home. I do want to tell you, that we're looking at beginning Bible class back in September, amen? Uh, we have to see how everything goes in our, you know, as far as the CDC guidelines, but as long as they allow us to meet, we are going to meet, amen? Amen, amen. I love church, amen. I love church, I love church, and I am so grateful and thankful uh, to be able to fellowship one with another, amen? Uh, and so it is such a blessing. I do want to say uh, that our youngest daughter, Jalissa, is here. Jalissa, wave your hand. Uh, Jalissa is leaving this month. She's going to Finland to play professional volleyball. Uh, amen. So we need your prayers. Amen. <laughs> uh, we need your prayers, especially uh, in the day and time we live in our world today. So much is happening and so much with all of this uh, stuff going around. And so we want to make sure that she is covered with prayers and that... Uh, the Lord blesses her to excel in what she does. Amen? Amen. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. Um, stand on your feet, everybody. Stand on your feet, everybody. God, we thank you now for your word. We thank you for this service. We pray that everything that has been done has been pleasing in your sight. We pray, oh God, that we did not leave a stone unturned, but that every need was met. Thank you for showing us what we need to do when you bless us. We bless you for it. Lord, as I close this particular service, I want to pause to say thank you. Thank you for every person under the sound of my voice, every person viewing on social media. Thank you for just being God. Not for your many blessings so much as you being God. You're great and you're greatly to be praised. We thank you. Thank you for being the head of our lives. Thank you for orchestrating our lives. Thank you for being in total control of everything. We just say thank you. God, we thank you for these gifts and givers. We pray that you will return in some 36 and 100 fold for the tither. Open up the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing that will not be room enough to receive. God, thank you for more than enough. 
thank you that there's no lack in this house. Thank you for meeting every need. Both spiritually and naturally. We close this prayer. We close this service by simply saying we love you. We love you. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We love you. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Go in peace. The Lord loves you and I do too.